Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to show you what happens to yellow jacket nests in the winter in North America, in regions where there is snow and ice and weather gets below freezing for periods of time. What you see here is a nest that we believe was built by one of our beneficial native yellow jacket species called the Eastern Yellow Jacket, or Vespula maculifrons. This is a cavity dwelling species, which means they prefer dark enclosed spaces, usually underground or in buildings or natural spaces like tree stumps and hollow logs. In this case, the nest was located in the basement right next to some bulkhead doors, which are exterior metal doors built close to the ground that typically lead down from the yard into an underground basement. The wasps had set up their nest on the entry ceiling on a piece of blue foam insulation that had been nailed to the basement ceiling. What was interesting about this nest is that they actually utilized the blue foam material to build the nest by mixing the foam material directly into the wood pulp that they typically gather in the wild. And they chew up this wood pulp with their saliva to build the paper nest. So the nest had a beautiful bluish color blended in with the natural earth tones of the wood pulp. So it was very unique looking. You see blue swirls throughout the entire nest, the comb and the paper envelope surrounding the comb. This nest is a good specimen to illustrate what happens to a yellow jacket nest in the winter. In colder regions like the northern part of North America, all the wasps die off at the end of the season in the late fall, early winter, except for the newly born queens who mate in the fall and then they hibernate over winter and in the following spring they start new nests somewhere else. But the old nest is simply abandoned as you see here. All the wasps are dead and all the new queens have gone away to hibernate over winter. They usually don't stay in the old nest to hibernate, although it does happen sometimes. We have seen and found queens hibernating in old nests before, but that's not usually the case. So here we'll go back to the video and just show you a little bit more about what we found inside this abandoned nest. So this nest has been removed and you can see here the larger cells are for queens and males. And these are constructed later in the season in the fall. The smaller cells, the initial comb, that was the first one to, that was just constructed, those are smaller because those are worker cells. Those are the first cells that are made. So back on voiceover for a minute, you can see how much of the foam insulation these wasps actually removed. It goes a couple inches at least up into this foam insulation and it actually goes beyond the piece of insulation, which is a good two, three inches thick. So they really chewed and excavated out a huge cavity up there, which is what they typically do underground. They'll move dirt out of a particular root space they find or an old rodent cavity and they will expand it out just like this and then they will begin to construct their brood cells in whatever cavity space there is and as the brood grows and as they need more space they simply excavate out more and more of the space as you can see here they use part of the insulation in the paper envelope on the outside of the nest that they cover the comb with but they also used it on the comb itself if you inspect the comb carefully you can see swirls of blue in the comb structures. So as usual, these wasps are showing pretty amazing adaptability to utilize whatever their native environment might have to offer them for nest building spaces and nest building materials. This is actually soft styrofoam insulation uh, nailed to the ceiling of this basement, some type of foam. And the wasps have chewed away a large section of it and probably taking advantage of a small hole that was in it originally, but they also chewed some away. And they built right into the fiber, the wood fiber that they collected from outside. They chewed that up into a pulp, mixed it here even with some of the styrofoam. So you can see part of the envelope was actually constructed with some of that bluish green insulation styrofoam material chewed right into the wood paste that they were building with to make the envelope which comes out like a paper. So it's actually kind of a pretty 
color that they came up with in their paper envelope. A lot of earth tones and then some blues and greens from the insulation. If you look up in here, you can see the nest actually goes quite a ways into this insulation. So we'll try to get back in there and pull it out. So once we had excavated out the nest, you can see here there was more insulation above this foam, which was paper covered insulation. And they had used a lot of that paper to also construct the nest. So we had three materials here in one nest. It was the foam insulation they utilized, also the paper they found in the insulation above the foam, and also the natural wood fibers they collected on the outside out in the wild. So this nest was a combination of man-made materials and natural fibers from the wild. So our little native yellow jackets were pretty amazing engineers on this one. They used everything they could find in the natural environment and in the man-made spaces to get it done. And it came out to be a pretty little nest. So now you know what wasps do with their nests at the end of the season. In the winter time, we hope you learned something and had a good time riding along with us. Thanks for being here. Have a good one.